Hello everyone. In another video for ChatGPT, I want to amaze you again and show you what you can do with this uh, amazing AI platform. So here we're going to look at helping, uh, getting help from ChatGPT on writing lab reports, something that I know many of you are not so happy about writing. Yet they are very important teaching you about uh, proper writing, but uh, seems like this device is here now and there is no way back. So I want to show you, for instance, with a simple example, what you can do with it. So here I have this Excel file called, uh, called it the hooks experiment. And here I have uh, 10 data points for forces and let's say these are the weights that I'm hanging from the spring and these are the measure deflections and I basically uploaded this Excel file it had one sheet sheet one back then and uh, all I did was gave it the Excel file and say hey these are the results from the hook experiment hooks experiment do a curve fitting and find the spring constant for me and guess what it did it look here and uh, the K that I used was 40 and I added some random noise to it so it's not a perfect match and you see actually it, act, it plotted the data points past the best fitted line and found the slope which if, even if I do it in Excel I should get a similar result 38.94 if I add the trend line. You see and it properly added for me a X label, Y label and a title. Beautiful huh? Just something that you wanted to do in Excel just give it the Excel file, this will do it for you. And now it gives me the K, 38.94 Newton per meters. Now I go one step further. I say, okay, fine, great job. Now I want you to fill this sample cover page for me. So I want to now convert this graph into a report, right? So far I only have a graph and a number. So now I gave it this a sample cover page I have and i changed this it's actually for my robotics lab but i changed it called it uh, physics lab one and just gave it some random name and the areas i wanted to modify for me is this part here where it's the name of the lab which is hooks experiment and title of the lab and then the name of the person who made it <laughs> it should really be chat gpt but i'm giving it my name and then for instructor i just added something and some college and some university in some time okay so this is the sample cover page that you need to fill the red areas with your info and then add the rest of the uh, result and the introduction and abstract and everything underneath this uh, lab report and make it a bigger uh, word document so here i said okay use this use my name and use the labs title and uh, do it and uh, it did that. Now, a couple of times it had problems uh, doing it properly. And a couple of times it had problems merging the modified Word document with the uh, lab reports that I asked it to do some stuff, right? So here you see I said, now write me a brief lab report where for the cover page you do all of that and then uh, in the results section show this graph and calculated k made the final report a word document so merging the two word documents a few times it had problems and so on and then i said okay make sure you add an introduction and talk about the hooks experiment and a brief abstract also add a figure caption and number okay and it did that and then uh, I went back and said, okay, uh, make sure that the cover page is on the top of the report because it didn't do it. And also I want you to add a hooks experiment picture for me to the results section, because if you talk about hooks experiment, you have to have a picture, right? And it did that again a few times. It had some problems, but ultimately it generated this picture for me and then said, okay, if you want, you can use your own picture, but if you want a generic picture of the Hooks experiment, this is a picture that it generated for me, okay? And then uh, once it generated everything, look here. First of all, you see that correctly, replace the title of the lab, replace my name, and now it 
it's the abstract. Then we have introduction. Now here it has some issues like these formulas, but I'm sure you can get those fixed. Then it shows the results section. It added a figure caption and the hooks experiment a few times I asked it to put the figure caption underneath, but still it put it above. So some of the features still need tuning and I'm sure they will take care of it in the future versions. But some of the stuff it still does not understand perfectly. And then here is the second picture on uh, the setup for the uh, experiment. And then uh, you can add it to add references for you or anything else. So here, that is a simple what? A simple lab report. And you can make it more complicated. Again, it's not perfect yet, but it is actually in the right direction. So this is one, huh? Writing a lab report, a painful process which is, again, very good for your growth and learning, but if you want some help and you're short on time, it can help you. The next one, I just wanted to uh, analyze some data. So here I added a second sheet to uh, this original document, I, and, and I added some grades with an outlier, and I wanted to do outlier analysis for me. So let's say these are the grades of my class that I exported to uh, an Excel file, and I want to see if there is any outlier, and if there is, it neglected, and then basically give me a curve, right? Apply a curve to the grades and modify the grades, and then export it as an Excel file again. So look what it did. So here, these are the grades. Do an outlier analysis using the box method. Here, I gave it the method, but if you don't, I'm sure it has a bunch of different methods that it can do. Neglect the uh, outlier and suggest a curving scheme and export the curve grade. And again, uh, one of the things I made a mistake was I said it's sheet 2 with small letter H while it was sheet 2 with capital letter H. So it could not find it. Then it says, hey, probably it's case sensitive. You made a mistake. And now it went and opened sheet 2 with capital S. So if you make a mistake, it's smart enough to what? To find it. So it opened this. And then you see here, clearly, it is doing the box method. And then, so there is an outlier. That's that grade 12. One thing I can do is to uh, get rid of that 12, make the highest grade 100, and then multiply every grade by 100 divided by maximum grade. So basically, linearly scaling everything up. It did that. It even gave me the um, uh, results, right? on the um, some statistics on the curve grades where the maximum is now 100 the mean is 73 the median is 72 standard deviation the minimum and so on and then exported it and this is the export look that highest grade that i had which was um 99 i guess that 99 is now turned to 100 then um 83 is probably a little bit higher 83 something and then that 12th grade is gone Okay, so you see, this is what it is. Or I could say, hey, I can get rid of that 99, right? And then uh, do it again, or I say, okay, apply the same curve on that grade 12 as well. But you clearly see that it can do analysis on your Excel files, okay? And this is done in this GPT called Excel GPT. So this is one of the very powerful assistants for uh, doing Excel. Okay, so if you click on about, about, you see that it can do data analysis mode for you, reorganize data mode, try our brand new GPT, that's it, uh, advertising, and then function writing mode, and a bunch of the, the different things. Okay, and it's very uh, powerful, and it also works with uh, Dell E images and data analysis, so it can generate images for you as well. Okay, so if you want to uh, do analysis on Excel data, here you go. This is what you have over here. And you can do way more complicated. This is about writing a report, merging stuff from Excel and Word document. And uh, this is the uh, next thing I ask it. And this here is the other GPT called presentation. Okay, and this presentation and slides GPT is the one that can make you PowerPoints for your presentation. So here, create a presentation on 2025 trends in banking, tell me what you can do, create outline for something and so on. By the way, um, 
uh, the lab reports, I also ask it, look, at the very end of the lab report, I ask it, hey, could you uh, generate a PowerPoint for me? Okay, so let's see here. Can you also make a PowerPoint from this lab report? And guess what? It did it perfectly well. Look here. You see here is, okay, so uh, here you see the abstract, the title, you see all the information from the Word document is transferred properly to the um, PowerPoint, the abstract is there, the intro is there, the experiment setup is there, and then the result is there. And again, you can add, you can ask it to do more. So you see a lab report, a presentation, everything is easily done in ChatGPT. And uh, this specific one here that is called presentation and slide GPT, this one, this is where you can uh, basically, uh, let's see, you can ask it for um, any other thing as well. This is specifically for uh, presentations. So here say, create a presentation about the effects of AI platforms like ChatGPT on higher education and make it at most 10 slides, add relevant pictures, graphs, and statistics. And then say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is the outline of the presentation, intro to AI, technical foundation, improving accessibility and inclusion, personalized learning. So it is go going about all good things. And then ethical consideration, future trends, prediction, and conclusion. Okay, so you see it is going down. And here, that's slide number one that it made. And uh, the interesting thing is it also give credentials to the people who uh, the, made those pictures, right? So if it takes a picture from somewhere, it actually gives proper reference. So uh, uh, could be quite a bit more, uh, I would say, copyright protection here compared to uh, a bunch of other uh, people who just might not even say where the material is coming from. And then technological foundations of AI in education, right? And then it goes to improving accessibility and inclusion. Then it goes to personalized learning with AI. So it shows you all the thing. Then automated assessment tools powered by AI. So AI in testing and grading. Benefits of automation and challenges and consideration, right? So then it goes to facilitating research with AI. Goes down to transforming curriculum development. And um, then it says, okay, I'm done with seven slides. I said, are you done? I said, no, I'm done with seven slides. Do you want me to go more further? I said, yes. Now it goes to ethics and future trends and prediction and hopefully conclusion there we go and then what uh view sl download the slide so these are individual slides now i say i want to download all 10 slides in a single file okay now that it made them combining them uh, is um, hopefully doable. You see it says now go view download the complete presentation. So it gives me a link and if I go there it should give me all of the slides in one place. Let's see. And guess what? Here it is. Look. 10 slides made for me. All I did was provided some prompts. That's all it is. So it seems like prompt engineering and making good prompts in the future <laughs> could be a job of its own if it's not already, which I assume it is. So you see here, if it's not really any uh, new intellectual things in it and it's just gathering information and putting them together, you can easily use AI to basically facilitate the thing for you and to accelerate the process. Hopefully this video was useful to you. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.